We're going to have a look at the Orange Basin, which is uh, offshore Namibia and South Africa. Here's a location map and the things we're going to talk about today. We're going to follow up on the news for the graph and the Venus discoveries, major discoveries made last month in February. And uh, we're going to look at the Eurecon Africa, the onshore Namibia, um, extends into Botswana area, uh, because there was a question about this in the last video we did. Likewise, we're going to take a quick look at the uh, regional prospectivity. We're going to look at uh, Gazania. Uh, there was an announcement about that earlier today. And finally, we're going to take a quick look at the, the impact of the conjugate margin, again, in answer to a video question. Here's the latest updates on uh, Venus and Graf. First, Venus. We have a... Um, we have a video out on YouTube, so that covers most aspects of that discovery. Total Energies, the operator, has confirmed 84 metres of net pay, um, saying that the coring and logging have now been completed. The well was not without incident, um, some, some tough conditions with at least four days waiting on weather, and uh, there were two kicks, uh, we understand, experienced in the drilling of that well. So, so some challenges here for the engineers. Described as the largest sub-Saharan oil discovery. Well, <clears throat> seen numbers quoted of anything between 1.5 to over 3 billion barrels. But at this stage, we kind of want to see some appraisal well results before we get uh, carried away with how big this thing could, could be. But it certainly looks very exciting. In the case of Shell's Graph 1 discovery, well... Um, there is a sort of a, a step out appraisal well that's actually drilling ahead as we speak, so we'll follow up on that uh, in the next release. The map on the uh, on the side here shows the uh, the really extensive position that uh, Total Energies has got and the the acreage that they operate both in Namibia and and round. Uh, south of the, the Orange Basin and, and into the uh, Utanega Basin in South Africa. So major player in here. And we will be doing a video on that featuring the Brule Padder and Leopard uh, discoveries and just the, uh, the general geology for that region. Coming back and going on to look at the uh, prospectivity in the area. So here we've got the Venus 1 discovery, the Graf 1, and here's uh, the approximate location for Graf 2, which is uh, drilling ahead. This is a map that comes from uh, Harmerton Energy. Uh, we're hoping to learn more about the leads they have in the block. This looks very, very interesting here. This Cullinan uh, prospect, um, which is sort of supposedly uh, similar looking to Venus. And uh, this Venus West, you know, um, as big as Venus, and uh, it could well be connected. The uh, the Cullinan prospect looks like it might actually extend uh, into the, the Galt block to the north and into the Rhino resources if, um, if it kind of came in at that uh, very large size. But these look really significant and, and exciting plays. This uh, may be the feature that we're looking at here on, on, this, um, on this seismic, which was uh, from Impact Oil and Gas. We've talked about the Harmerton block, but there's the uh, makeup of the uh, the partnership in in that block. And again, we look forward to hearing from Harmerton when they've got their named prospects and they can send us some material to, uh, to, to show on that block. Just to the north is the pan-continental block. And uh, what you can see in this section here is that, uh, you know, this has been around for quite some time. This is the, the Saturn complex. And there is this, uh, this core fan area of over 2,400 square kilometres. Well, the, co the complex is more than 2,004. It looks like nearer to 3,500 square kilometres. And it's thought to be a, a turbidite fan. Very similar, but in shallower waters than uh, than Venus. Um, Pan-continental Custos and, uh, and, of course, Namcor with their 10%. Here's a line that shows it. The line's running north here to, to south. And you can see that there's uh, the interpretation here is showing the thick shales sealing the top. We've got this package that's uh, thought to be sand-rich, uh, causing this mounded feature here. Underneath it, um, we have source rock. Now, the source rock was actually... Uh, encountered in the Moosehead 1 well and was uh, found to have uh, high quality. If we can get it deeper in the base and get it mature, then uh, then you know, you're know you juxtaposing mature source rock against uh, a, a very nice looking thick sand sequence. So that's, uh, that's the play that uh, is being looked at there. One of the questions that was asked um, after our Venus uh, video 
Do you have insight into how, if at all, the Venus discovery relates to the onshore work the Canadians are conducting? Well, we've had a look at that, and uh, this is from uh, Recon Africa. It's on this small inset map. You know, it's right in northern Namibia, well inland, and it's uh, it's on the border with Botswana. So here is the border, Botswana to the east, Namibia to the west. Uh, you can see that Recon Africa, 90% with Namcor, 10%. And in this block, it's 100% Recon Africa. So seismic's been shot, and um, two wells have been drilled, and... The operators reported uh, significant thicknesses and, and, and extent of, of shows, uh, 250 metres of shows in here, 343 metres of, uh, of oil and gas shows in the uh, the 6-1. Well, so um, if we have a look at uh, this, this comes from uh, monitor exploration. They talk in terms of the Awambo Basin, and uh, here's, a, here's a section they show, which has actually got the 6-2 well over here on the uh, the eastern side, so their interpretation, uh, showing the, the great thickness here of, of, of shows, both within the Karoo and then on, in the underlying Proterozoic uh, carbonates. This is presumably uh, the Kavango Basin, uh, th these uh, Mesozoic and Cenozoic sediments here, whereas these deeper Paleozoic, and uh, proterozoics um, you know the this is this is more akin to the uh, the Awambo basin the geology here it looks more like somewhere like the uh, Amadeus basin in uh, in Australia than uh, bearing much relationship or or much in common with the offshore Atlantic basins which are being drilled Another question we got is, uh, do you know if there's a, any chance that something similar will happen on the other side of the Atlantic? Well, we did a video on this. Um, I think the video was back in March 2021. And at that time, we used this reconstruction here, putting South America back alongside Africa. And uh, we commented in that video that... Uh, if we look at the uh, the discoveries, fields and discoveries, we have 400, or we had 400 at the time in, in our basins here on the South America side, and over 700 on the African side. And we showed, you know, the, the sort of the strange uh, relationship that, you know, on the Campos and Santos basins of Brazil, uh, we've got a huge number of discoveries, but on the Kwanza and uh, Benguela basin side, well, a lot fewer, an order of magnitude fewer. Move up further and uh, go into Congo and Gabon, and we've got a huge number of discoveries and fields in here, whereas on the Brazil side, not not as many, again, uh, an order of magnitude less. Niger Delta is a sort of special case. I'll just, I'll just move on to talk about the Tano Basin and the uh, Cote d'Ivoire region. And again, it seems that uh, we've got lots of fields and discoveries on, on one side, but not as yet as many. Trinidad and Tobago are different because here we're talking about uh, complexity with lots of Caribbean microplates. So it doesn't really have any uh, relationship to what's happening on the, the Africa side. We need to update this because we've now got at least five discoveries down here in the uh, Orange Basin. So we will be updating that at some stage in the future. Have a look at the video. Um, hopefully that's informative and, and kind of just shows you the power of of our uh, Trove data set. Lots of material available online on the reconstruction. A couple of papers we thought were pretty good and there's some other great references. Um, if uh, if you want to put them in the uh, comments below, people can uh, can go and have a look at those. Oh, suffice to say that the region we're talking about is, is south of the Walvis Ridge, Rio Grande Rise. The reconstruction is, is kind of definitely somewhere into this sort of the Argentina region and we'll come back and have a look at that. Today's um, sponsors are Apex Tubulars who are the suppliers of downhill casing tubing and accessories to the global oil and gas market. Colorado Basin, this on the west side is on the Ar Argentina side and you can see similarities with the Orange Basin on the eastern side of, of South Atlantic. Uh, you can see, you know, there's a huge, great prograding building out shelf and I mean, get these four sets and slumps and, uh, you know, major sediments and here, here's the, uh, the sin and pre-rift sequence. Uh, likewise, this is the sort of the expression of the Colorado Basin. 
What you can see is uh, it's clearly not just about uh, Atlantic Ocean. We, we do have these offsets and these basins. Here's the Salado and the Colorado Basin down here. So great uh, seismic features here. You can see this faulting and slumping. You can see all this very mixed up material and, um, you know, great thickness of section. We've then got the sort of the, the pre-rift down here and the sin-rift coming up and through this sequence here. The region um, that we are most interested in is going to be this CAN 100 block in the Col offshore Colorado Basin, which we anticipate there could be a, a well as soon as uh, fourth quarter of this year. So seismic has been shot, reprocessed, and I think uh, interpretation's ongoing. YPF operate with Equinor and Shell. So come back to the channel and we'll give you an update when there's an announcement on the drilling of that well. To wrap up, we will continue to watch developments and report in a follow-up. Drilling activity will be closely monitored, not just in the Colorado Basin, but uh, but elsewhere. There really isn't any relationship or any relevance uh, between what's happening offshore and onshore in Namibia, uh, as, as we can see it. So nothing really to be gleaned there. You know, we will say the offshore area is absolutely enormous. It's huge. And so, um, you know, the activity is kind of moving down to, to South Africa. We are just showing what the material that we have ready to call on, and, and this is the material that we've collated here for Graf, Venus, Ibabesi, Kudu. This is Gazania 1. I mean, the well hasn't even drilled yet, so this is just the, the information we have on the prospect. And likewise, here's, here's three offshore Namibia prospects that we've pulled out of Trove, just to show you that it's very, very extensive and covers fields, discoveries, um, prospects and indeed some dry holes and, and other material. Just a quick look at Gazania 1. This is what it looks like here. We've got the AJ1 discovery down here. It's kind of unusual that the, the oil seems to be at the bottom of this uh, sandier package. And the anticipation is that there's going to be lenses of, of potential oil as we move on up. This is uh, Gazania. Um, so they're seeing basically this upper sequence here, which is more fluvio-deltaic sandstones interbedded with silts and shales. This upper sequence, the Namakawa land, this will be tested, but this is the uh, Gazania here. Here, the deeper section which I think is probably more uh, deeper water sediments and you know it's going to drill down we think to the order of about 2700 meters the operator is uh, Africa Energy and uh, Crown Energy or a subsidiary of Crown Energy uh, have the other 10 percent here's the AJ one discovery drilled back in 1988 and this was a proposed location for Gazania um, a few years ago the contract's been awarded to uh, Island Drilling, and, and this is the Island Innovator. It's a sixth-generation semi-submersible, and, you know, this region does get some bad weather conditions, as we heard of Venus One. NRG will be doing the, the well management uh, for this particular drilling operation. Um, we're going to build this map up as, as we go. We've got a number of videos out there that basically feature what's happening in Guyana, Suriname, and in particular in Namibia. Uh, we've got a follow-up coming on. On uh, South Africa. An interesting one on uh, how Abu Dhabi is going to increase its production by a million barrels a day by 2030, which is, is very interesting. It's a huge scale of operation for, for such a, a small country. And then we will be returning to uh, the Atlantic margin and, and the North Sea, our sort of backyard here. And um, we'll, uh, we'll add to this map. So if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you will get alerts uh, for upcoming videos. Please subscribe. There's contact details. And if you ring the bell, you'll get informed when we put a new video out. Thanks very much for listening and look forward to seeing you back on this channel. Bye for now.